this is a bit of a different type of vlog. Um, I've seen quite a few posts on Facebook recently. Um, new people starting up van life. A lot of them asking what the negatives and stuff like that. Um, I, th I thought it may be best to give my little sort of views on. So sort of, I've been four years now. Um, now don't take this in the wrong way. I'm still, you know, 100%, you know, this is brilliant, you know, to do. But the reality is a lot different to what you see on Instagram, Facebook, and the pictures we post. I mean, I post some lovely pictures. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, it's a struggle to live this fun life or lorry life like me. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd do this vlog um, just to highlight a few things. I mean one of the biggest highlights i can give uh, especially after this covid is park hubs um, people think they can just get in a van and they can just travel and park up it's not like that now and it's getting worse um just in my area in link i mean you'd have seen me you know if, if people who follow me on my youtube channel the off grid nomad You'll see some of the places I've been. I've been touring around Lincolnshire. Now, 50% of them places in Lincolnshire where I've been touring over the last year are now gone. Uh, Hutoff, a big a big favourite one. They're now putting WL lines, ticket machines in. Uh, they've even stopped fishermen. Um, that's all coming out in the next few months. A park up I was at the other day, you know, it was just rammed full of campers no parking signs are up and this is all over the country the councils now are putting the, you know if they're legal or not it's always a question you know a lot of it's deterrence they just put no camping no overnight uh it's 50 50 if it's uh if it's legal or not um that's the thing but it does scare you off um, now, you know, with anyone who's just going to jack in everything and get rid of the house and, and go on the road, I thought I'll make a quite an honest, I've seen quite a few of these videos, but I'll just sort of make an honest review on what I, I'm seeing at the moment. Now, I'm changing a little bit away. I travel a little bit. You'll have noticed I've been to a campsite uh, where my lads do fishing. Now, I'm going to start doing a bit more of this. I mean, they're only going to be super cheap campsites. More for like the weekend, something like that. Like um, the Bushcraft Centre, £7.50 for an adult, kids are free. Bargain places. We can go for a weekend away. And it doesn't break the bank. But you're not having to worry about park-ups or finding a park-up. Uh, that's going to be the new thing because if this new laws come out, um, obviously you've all been hearing about the new laws um, with the you know the crime bill where just one person on a lay-by sleeping in your truck could be classed as a nuisance and you could be evicted and the truck taken off you. There's so much going on. I mean, they say it's to do with the travellers, but we all know in reality. It only takes one uh, copper on a bad day and he'll just, you know, throw all that at you. So it's going to happen. So, yeah, I don't want anyone to think that it, it's just a wonderful life. I mean, you know, even I do. I've worried, you know, like now, I'm thinking now, where am I going to go this weekend? Um, I haven't got the kids. Um, it's Thursday night, Friday night tomorrow. I finish work tomorrow night, six o'clock, and I've got three days off. And I'm thinking, well, where am I going to go? I don't like going into the same places. Uh, I mean, one of the places I went to, it's, in, it's going to be in my other vlog, um, that I thought, there's been a couple living there now for over a year and a half. I know they've spoken to the charity and stuff like that, but this is what's going to shut places down. I had to travel. Um, you know, I was continuously travelling. They've just sort of stuck the heels in and, and moved in and lived there um i don't know if it, how many people it's upset you know sort of locals or whatever i'm not sure um but the more people who do that 
it's going to upset a lot more people. I know I've, I've seen reports of Mantor, big famous place. Now, I used to love going to Mantor up in Derbyshire, but every time I see a video or photos, it is just packed solid of campers. Even to the point where there was a bus couldn't get round, and the bus drive, they've now put new signs up. Um, even the caves there were asking people not to park in front of their place um, so it's gonna be a slippery slope that place that's why I've not been back I didn't want to cause anybody hassle you know um, but there's a lot of people now full-time and staying in one place a lot too much I think um, instead of traveling I mean like Derbyshire I mean I must have 50 or 60 spots I've found over the years um, so I, you know you can move around still but yeah I think if you're gonna go full-time and you're gonna be new to this and um, you're coming in when it's a bit harder I mean I when I used to travel you know years ago I mean I can go go around Derbyshire and there's probably five campers there I mean you'll know probably Liam terrible and stuff there was Liam there's me and a few others there wasn't really that many um, and obviously now people aren't going abroad See, this is the other scale of it. Now, thousands and thousands of campers would have been going abroad. They can't go abroad now at the moment. The holidays are not going. The countries are still under lockdown and red areas. and So they're all staying in England. So that everyone's fighting for the same spot. So this year, at least, I think it's going to be really difficult. And I think if you're going to go as a full-timer, you need to take this knowledge on, you know, that you need a backup plan. Um, that you know find cheap campsites uh, now I noticed with the caravan and camping club uh, I'm a member which I do need to re renew actually now if you're single you get some really cheap places I mean from £6.50 a night and a lot of these places what they do is they charge you per person and that, or per child and per dog um, so they can get a bit pricey now I have noticed with the the, the caravan and camping club uh, there was quite a few places I would say you know quite a lot which were under 10 quid I could go to small sites and even with my lorry they would accept me so as you've seen a little fishing place I go to um, they're, they're fine they look they don't mind me coming 10 quid a night and that includes fishing so for 20 quid for a weekend you know I'm now budgeting um, campsites now into my routine um, so we're going to try and find other little cheaper places to go to it, I think it's just going to sort of take the eyes away from the local if I'm, well, if I'm local yeah. but obviously for locals that you're not you know wild camping all the time I mean I know a lot of people can't afford to and trust me I'm skinned just as the same as you just because I've got this flashy motor <laughs> I'm broke um, you know, there's no difference there to everyone else. So I have to sort of budget as much as I can because I'm paying for my kids still. And then when they come, I've got to get extra food. And, you know, and when we do go to these campsites, you know, there is tempting things there. And then when we go fishing, the kids are always in the bait shop and the tackle shop. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. And I come out spending a little bit more than I should have done. But, yeah, so it was, this video is more sort of just, you know, for people just to wake up a little bit to it you know if you're going new into this um just don't think it's as easy as you think water's another problem where to get water from now i'm not going to go into all the full details of where to go you, there's loads of that online and loads of people have done all the videos i just thought i'd do an honest review of my idea um and i think people need to start looking at campsites as a way i mean even they're hard to get into at the moment but it sort of gives you a place to go. I mean, there's simple little things like I'm in a metal detecting club. Now, when they do a weekend events, I can stay at their, you know, on site, on you know, in the fields, and a lot of people do. Again, cheap, cheap weekend away. So I'm looking at alternative things like car shows, events, uh, you know, all these sort of places where you can get off park ups and lay bys and stuff like that and go, you know, an alternative park up. 
uh, until the days until I come into some money from my crypto and things and investments where I can buy some sort of land or forest what I want to do um, but yeah at the same time I mean I'm lucky I've got working away so I, I'm, I'm in works car park now so it gives me a few days off the road now if I was full time on the road you know it's even that's more places I've got to find to park up so I just thought I'd give that perspective because you know it's like somebody was posting the oh, you know what's the negatives what's the positives um, and stuff like that and I think people just seem to think it's easy now but honestly, I th from what I'm seeing online and watching other people's videos and everywhere, you know, people are going to the spots they used to go to. This is people who just now been allowed out just to travel. They've got houses and their favorite little spots have now been shut down. And that is everywhere. I would say 50% of park ups getting on that way have been closed down now um, around the UK. And not just the UK, I mean, look at Portugal. Portugal's gone for a national shutdown, you know. Spain now evicting people off the beaches. Um, you know, certain areas, that it's a clampdown and it's getting worse around the world. They're, they're stopping it. So I didn't want people to, you know, to go out and spend thousands like me, you know, like me, you know, I've spent thousands on this truck um, to find where we're gonna park. You know, where am I going to go tonight? And it is a worry sometimes. I know a lot of people do sort of stress about it when they're traveling, going, where am I going to park? Where am I going to park? Um, I try and work out where I'm going to go and sort it out because obviously the size of my truck is a bit bigger now. Um, when I had my old transit, it was a lot easier. But I have to think, I mean, there's some beautiful spots like in Derbyshire, um, I used to go, but I know this truck is too wide to go in some of them spots I used to go same as the Lake District um, but now places like you know like the Lake District they've really toughened down since lockdown they you know all the um, you know the wardens all these um, you know the National Trust everyone are now ticketing and the police are knocking on people's doors at night there was quite a lot being moved I mean I know it's a bit doom and gloom, but don't get me wrong, there's still thousands of park ups and I mean, I'm still okay, um, but I'm, I'm having to use the same ones more and more now, as you'll know, it's like Thaddle thought, uh, because I know people have been living there, I know it's sort of, and the wardens are actually active now, I did see the warden truck, and he did actually talk to some other people he didn't say he didn't kick them off but he did say it was no overnight camping uh, but he didn't say you've got to leave or anything like that i think it was just more of a warning but obviously he couldn't probably enforce it because they're letting you know two other vans stay there um which you know in the full lockdown we you know was lovely of them uh, if that's the case that's the story i've heard that they've approached the charity i think it was english uh, is it English Heritage? No, I can't remember where it was called. English Trust or something. Um, it's a nature one, but um, yeah, it's you know it, water. Like I was saying about water, is always a, an awkward one as well. Uh, I helped a van life for well, a, a couple in a van in my Soul Fleet spot the other day. They really now run out of water. And they said, where's the nearest place I can get some water? And it's like, well, they're in anywhere. That's why I've got big, massive tanks. And I'm okay. I can fill up at work, fill up with my sisters. Um, I was at the um, campsite at the weekend. So the first thing I do is empty all my toilets, fill up. Um, you know, so I know I'm okay for another month. Now, again, that's another good reason for using a campsite. You know, even if it's for one night to fill your tanks up, empty your toilets, get rid of your rubbish. You know, if you can get one for under a tenner, it's worth all that money, you know, it's worth that tenner, just for a, a peace and quiet for the night, you know, so you don't, you, you can have a drink, so you don't, you know you're not gonna get moved on. You can fill all your tanks or everything's, you know, sort of sorted. Um, quite a few YouTubes now, John and Mandy and a few other sort of ones, they, uh, they often use 
um, campsites, you know, charge your batteries up in the winter. So I think if you're going full time now, you need to take that into into your plan on living. Get a little um, note of where's near you. If you're going to just stay in an area, find out all the campsites, ring round, or you can use it, the internet. It's it's brilliant. It tells you everything in your area. Find out how much the prices are, or even just message them, email them, say how much just for a, a fill up, or you know just to go and use the services. Especially if they've got some, you see quite a lot of places now have washing machines. But you can also, you know, again for washing, you can also now go online and they have these, you know, in garages, they have washing machines now. I know this is one up near Scunthorpe, near Camp Cozy we go to. So, you know, there's a lot of this to work out. You know, it, it's not just jumping in a van and going. There's a you know there's a bit more to it where this truck sort of built to last a bit longer on you know where I can stock it up with water and gas and diesel and and I, I'm okay for at least a good month but obviously small vans I know from only having small water containers and them you know you're needing water at minimum you know every few days um, or to a week so. Yeah, I mean, I'm still in love with this sort of van life. I love it. Uh, I can't see myself in bricks and mortar again. I don't know in the future. I mean, health is one of your big things in this, you know, when you're thinking this. This is why I didn't go for a HGV, because if I become ill for any reason, say I have an eye problem, you lose your, you lose your HGV license straight away. They take that off you. So... You know that's why I'll, ooh, I'll keep it under seven and a half ton you know as a backup just little things like that but uh, if you've noticed now as a lot of people a lot of van lifers are looking for a second base uh, some sort of base or like you'll see some of them they're buying land now even abroad or in the UK uh, a, a, a boat, say. I mean, you've heard me say before. I've said a few things where I'm looking at a second base to go to, so it breaks up that living on the road and having to find park ups. Because I can see it in the next five years, it's going to get tough. There is thousands of new people coming into van life, and we're all competing for the same spots. Unfortunately, around the world, well, right, yeah, it is around the world in a way, but the UK. You know the roads. The roads are going to get fuller and fuller. Um, I mean, good luck to everyone. I mean, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not saying this to stop anyone. Um, we we just don't have the facilities in the UK. This is our biggest problem. Um, there's a Facebook group. Is it called Campra, where they are fighting councils and asking everywhere for UK airs now. This is something else we need to all get behind. Now, I was talking to a chap at the weekend and he was saying he's a big big um, partner in this and wherever he goes, he if he finds a plot of land and he thinks, oh, that bit of land there will be fantastic, you know, beautiful views, you know, a farm, you know, like an old farm or anything like that. He, could, he, he often asks, you know, the farmer and explains to him, look, you could have five vans on that x amount a night 10 quid and you know whatever and make money from it and they're like oh and they give the you know the coordinates back to the office the you know the people who are running it and they try and chase these people up and they are they're, they're around the country now they are opening up a few places and council they're in talks with um Huttoff would have been a good place but they apparently they've been talking for years and getting campers there is getting hard but then you've got places like hemsley they let campers in their car parks. We need to fight this more where we can get more um, camper spaces. Um, I like, you, you know, in the same areas as what you get in the UK, in abroad, where you can empty your toilets, fill up with water, stay the night, and, and then move on. Um, you know, in America, you've got BLM land uh, where you can stay for two weeks for free. You know, there's. there's but in England, it is tough. You know, we've got the traveller problem. Um, not all of them. I mean, you know, 
bless them. Uh, it's just one of them things. They, you know, and the government are really starting to clamp down, and it's going to affect us all. You know, they don't see us any difference. They just see a camper, and you're a traveller or not. They don't care. A new age traveller, they they will come for us all. You know, you could be an old couple who sold up their house and everything in a hundred thousand pound motorhome. They don't see that. They just see you as a traveller. Um, and I can see it. It's going to happen in in a few years' time. It's going to get worse. So, yeah, watch your space, guys. Um, I'm gonna. It just sort. There's just one post tonight, and it just thought. Do you know what? And I probably need to speak about that. And it did, and it opened my eyes up. I thought I need to start looking at these campsites. Um, but really cheap places. So I've done two, obviously, Oam Lakes uh, in Lincolnshire, near Mablethorpe, 10 quid a night, brilliant little place. I mean, it's not massive. Um, and then obviously that Beehive Bushcraft, £7.50 a night, absolutely brilliant place. And it's like you, you go proper, well, you know, old school, you know, back into the woods, you can, you know, with your fire, but you can stay in your camper. There's room for campers there. So there's got to be more police places so I'm, I'm going to start looking for more and hopefully through the year you know try and build up a, a, a blog for you know a log full um, so I've got places I can move around to and keep me a bit off the road a little bit uh, so I don't start upsetting locals because um, obviously you've seen in the past through Covid you know I've had some abuse and nasty letters left on my truck so the worst thing I could, you know, want is my truck being vandalised. The public are still scared, unfortunately. I was chatting to some the other day, and they're still paranoid about it all. And we're all going to get COVID still, and you know. So you can't change people's minds, unfortunately. Some of them are, are quite um, brainwashed with it all, really. You know, doom and gloom. That's all they've got. So yeah, I thought I'd give you a little update on that. So yeah, if you know if you are starting out or you're looking at starting out, I mean, please, I'm like I've always always said, message me. You can always chat to me. Come and see me. Uh, I'll give you hints and tips. Um, even I share space. You know, park ups I've got. I don't like posting too many online. You know, because there's still quite a lot. You know, somebody messaged me off Instagram the other day. Oh, where was that place you you went to? So, sent them that. Again, that was another one. That's another one. Just um, this beautiful little forest place I went to last September, last September or August with my kids. All no car, no parking overnight. It's all been shut down. Uh, that was up in Yorkshire, Bradgate, Bradgate, something it was called. It was up near the White Horse, uh, up in Yorkshire. Again, shut down. And same in Scarborough. Um, the sea Life Centre shut down. It's just everywhere now, and we're really, really struggling now for the lovely park ups we used to do. You know, I used to be able to do a big tour and go from you know for miles, but just no parking signs and no camping signs in all of them now. Um, so yeah, like I say, and I, it's just going to get worse. It is, it's really going to get worse over the years. They're going to really start clamping down, and it's a case of keep dodging, you know, parking fines. So, yeah, I'm going to look into more cheap campsites. I'm going to start hunting down. There is some Facebook groups um, for cheap campsites under 10 quid. Um, yeah, I might even approach something like the Caravan and Camping Club and see about doing maybe some filming. And, uh, find cheap campsites for big vehicles sake because i know a lot of you you know you guys are moving up to van you know up to lorries now up to our lorry life and again it's always an extra thing it's harder to park it's it's easier in a van i know people have sold sold big vans and going down to little vans um camper van gas he's got his camper up for sale and he's gone to a little you know tiny little van easier to park you know more sort of discreet more stealth so there's sort of two spectrums there you know you can go super big and the big lorries which are brilliant for room but you you do struggle for parking spaces 
so you know it's not as easy to stealth camp in a, in a street you know you're a lot wider you gotta remember you know you're eight foot wide sticking out in these little streets you know if you if you're an urban type you know stealth camping so yeah i hope that sort of helps a few people you know it's not a negative thing because like i say i love this life it's brilliant um i can't see myself coming out of it i can see myself doing part time as in like i was saying looking for a second base but you know traveling is it's just still brilliant even if it's just traveling local uh, i love it love it even if <laughs> even in, in a works car park you know i can't wait to get out of work and get in here and get you know get my tea on and just chill out in here it's just crazy i'd never think about that going home i never did it was weird so yeah it's, i mean it's in my blood but i just want people to be aware if you are starting this lifestyle you know it is not all instagram um you know it, it's a lot tougher a lot tougher and i've got it easier than some people as well so yeah like i say i'm looking for a new park up this weekend i might be heading to market raisin i've been there once before the internet's not very good but i fancy doing some biking so yeah that's about it what do you say rocks she's just fast asleep <laughs> you're opening your eyes aren't you yeah so yeah that's about it guys um yeah just take care like i say contact me message me if you know if you want any tips and hints and you know quite happy to help out but um don't let it put you off please don't let it put you off because you know that's not what this video is about it's not about putting people off this van life and stuff like that. i just want people to realize it is a little bit harder um than it was a good few years ago now and things will get harder i uh, there's no doubt about it just since the last lot just since lockdowns lifted camp you know campers are getting hit all over the place with you know rejection 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 and there's no camping there that you know boulders being put down down cornwall way you know stopping people by and this is all over the uk so you know it's gonna get tough guys so you know all we can do is sort of help each other out and try and find some spots keep them clean you know if you can visibly you know help clean up and we just try and you know trickle along but we'll all, we'll all have to buy land and we'll all have to just keep jumping around swap land there you go the, the we all buy a little plot and the old 28 day rules we all just swap swap every day <laughs> so after 28 days we'll swap you come to my field and i go to yours <laughs> but who knows you know there's all these little things we, we have to sort of think about any ideas how we can keep this sort of lifestyle going but legally without getting the harassment so hopefully things have calmed down once covid sort of died off and people are allowed to travel you know like i was saying there's thousands of campers now sales in 2020 went up 300 percent, but no one was allowed to leave so they've all got them campers and that 300 percent now are trying to find park ups and trying to get into campsites and again campsite prices are shooting up so that's why i'm going to try and find um cheap campsites and then i'll vlog them for you and um hopefully you know some of them are pretty good i'll have a word with the owners and try and sort something out i think if we can just you know get a price for just for van lifers to come and maybe do you know using the services and stuff like that so you know if i think if if anyone else any other youtubers are watching this if you do that and go onto a campsite and get their details maybe do the same you know we can all start doing sharing um campsites you know as a new sort of feature which i think will be you know pretty good um it might just help because there's, there's so many different types of campsites out at some a silly price so if we can keep them cheap you know it'd help people you know even if it was for a night and also you can do little meetups so 
Right, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Rambling on. It's been, God, it's been nearly 30 minutes, half an hour. Shit. God. So, yeah. Any, uh, anything else you think, you know, pop it in, in the thing. And also, if you're new or anything like that, like and subscribe. Helps the channel out. Do brilliant. Right, guys. Take care. See you later.